Hello and welcome. You're watching Raj Sabha News and Raj Sabha TV. Let's have a look at the talking lines. The Raj Sabha adjourned Sunday ahead of scheduled in view of coronavirus outbreak. Chairman M. Venkaiah Naidu appreciates overwhelming public response to Janata curfew. Appeals to everyone to stay vigilant. Raj Sabha records overall productivity of 76% in budget session, over 64% work done in second phase. Upper House approves 12 bills in 23 sittings. Rajya Sabha approves Union Budget 2020-21, Upper House returns Finance Bill to Lok Sabha, Jammu and Kashmir Appropriation Bill 2020 also sent back to Lok Sabha after discussion. Well, the news in details, Rajya Sabha was adjourned Sinai on Monday ahead of schedule amidst coronavirus concerns. The Upper House clocked 76% productivity during the budget session. 12 bills were passed and 249 public interest issues were raised in the Upper House during this period. Adjourning the House Sinai, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu informed that a total of 249 issues of public importance have been raised by the members during the session through 170R and 79 special mentions. 79 start questions were answered orally on 11 days, accounting for 48% of total 165 questions listed for oral answers, and a total of 12 bills were passed by the Upper House, including 6 on the last day. Giving details of time management, the Chairman informed that total of total time of 14 hours and 56 minutes was spent on discussing government bills and other 5 hours and 45 minutes on private members' bill accounting for 22% of total functioning time of the House. 11 hours and 24 minutes were spent on discussing the functioning of the Ministry of Railways, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises and Law and Justice, accounting for over 13% of the total time of the House. Expressing concerns over the disruptions, Chairman also asserted that members have no right to disrupt the House as claimed by somebody while they have a certain right to debate and discuss any issue in the house. As you all appreciate the reasons for which this budget session of parliament is being adjourned, sign a day ahead of the schedule, which is up to the 3rd of next month. As against the total 31 sitting schedule between 31st to April 3rd, we are constrained to conclude after 23 sittings. The budget session is primarily meant for char charting the right course of action for economic growth and development for the finance year 2020-21 through the budget, proposals made by the government and approved by the parliament. Ironically, the global outbreak of corona virus, with its origins in China, is set to play havoc with the global economic outlook with our country being no exception. The challenge before the world is to minimize the damage caused by the corona outbreak both to the health and wealth of the people across the globe. Our country is a spirited partner in the collective global efforts to contain the spread of this deadly virus. I fondly hope that collectively this battle would be won. For the information of the honorable members and for record, this August House functioned for a total of 90 hours and 30 minutes against the total scheduled time of 118 hours and 52 minutes during these 23 sittings. This in effect means that the productivity of the House, including both the parts of this budget session, has been 76.13% only. While the productivity of the first part of this session between 31st January and February 11 has been 97%, the productivity of the second part has begun on March 2nd comes to above 64%. The House clocked a high productivity of 106%. During the third week of the second part of this session, as against a low of 9.50 during the first week. A total functional time of 38 hours, 23 minutes of the house has been lost on account of disruptions during this session. This includes 32 hours 51 minutes, so lost during the second part of this session. As against this loss, the house sat beyond the scheduled time on 9 days for a total of 9 hours. 59 minutes. Honorable members, passionate and
quality debates on the motion of thanks to President's address and the general budget and over four hours short duration discussion on the violence in Delhi have been the highlights of this session. Well, Raj Sabha on Monday returned the Appropriation Bill and Finance Bill to Lok Sabha without discussion. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman moved the motion to discuss and return these bills to Lok Sabha. The motion was passed by voice vote in the upper house. Srimati Nirmala Sitharaman to move motions for consideration of the following bills. Uh, the Appropriation Bill 2020, Appropriation Number 2 Bill 2020, Finance Bill 2020. Should I do it one after the other immediately or will you call you me? We can move again? together also. Okay. I yes, rise sir. to move that the bill to authorize payment and appropriation of certain further sums from and out of the Consolidated <coughs> Fund of India for the services of the financial year 2019-20 as passed by the Lok Sabha be taken into consideration. Okay. Class 1, the enacting formula the title, stand part of the bill. Those in favor please say aye. aye. Those against will please say no. I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Class 1, the enacting formula and the title are adopted. Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitharaman to move that the bill be returned. Sir, I rise to move that the bill be returned. Motion moved that the bill be returned. The question is that the bill be returned. Those in favor will please say aye. Aye. Those against will please say no. I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the bill is returned. Well, Raj Sabha on Monday passed bill for the budget of rupees 1 lakh crore for Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir for the year 2020-21. After passing the bill, it was returned to Lok Sabha. The Upper House also approved and returned to Lok Sabha another bill for the budget of Ladakh as required under rules for money bills. The bills were approved with voice vote after a debate of over two hours. The Jammu and Kashmir appropriation bills were already passed by Lok Sabha on March 19th. The bills laid emphasis on development of newly carved out Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which was made a Union Territory with effect from October 31st, 2019. The total budget estimates for the fiscal is Rs. 1,1428 crore. The government also presented a separate expenditure plan of Rs. 55,317.81 crore for the last five months of the current fiscal. With, with regard to Union Territory of Ladakh carved out of the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir, the total budget estimates for the past five months have been pegged at Rs 5,754 crore. Replying to debate, Minister of State for Finance Anurag Singh Thakur said the government is committed for development of newly carved out Union territories. और 31 31 अक्टूबर को जो एक नया अध्याय जम्मू कश्मीर के लिए शुरू हुआ है उसमें मैं इतना ही कहना चाहता हूं अब एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव अप्रूवल भी होती है 100% वेरिफिकेशन भी होती है बजट में प्रावधान भी होता है ई टेंडरिंग भी होती है बट अर्ली मेनी मेंबर्स ऑफ द अपर हाउस स्पोक व्हाइल पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन डिस्कशन ऑफ द बिल सब कुछ क्या ठीक हो गया कितने महीनों के बाद वहां टेलीफोन जारी हो कितने महीनों के बाद इंटरनेट शुरू हो साढ़े सात महीने के बाद स्कूल और कॉलेजेस खुले और आज भी इंटरनेट आपका क्या 2G चलता है 10-15 दिन से 4G नहीं चल रहा जिन बच्चों की बात की जा रही थी जिस प्रकार से बच्चे स्कूल खुलने के बाद हंसते कूदते स्कूल जा रहे थे जिनके हाथों में पत्थर दिया जा रहा था उनकी हाथों में हमने कलम और कंप्यूटर पकड़ाने का काम किया है यह दो तीन सौ सत्तर जाने का परिणाम है कश्मीर इकोनॉमी हैड सफर्ड दिस लेटेस्ट रिपोर्ट प्लीज लॉसेस टू द ट्यून ऑफ अराउंड सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट in the first 120 days and continue to do so after uh, that is after 22 days after August and continue to do so it also said around 4.96 lakh jobs were lost during this period as are now sir wahan ke shikshan sansthanon ko ja kar ke dekhiye main chahunga ki sarkar samanya jab sarkar bolti hai to wo samanya zameen pe dikhe kyunki samanya ka rhetoric और सामान्य की रियलिटी ना तो सेब के बगानों में ना बाजार में ना फुटपाथ पे ना अस्पतालों में ना विद्यालयों में है
Well, Rajya Sabha on Monday bid farewell to 57 members from 20 states who will retire between the months of April and July. One third of members of the upper house retire every two years. The retiring members included NCP veteran Sharad Pawar, Union Minister Ram Das Athawale from RPI Athawale, Congress Party veteran Motilal Vohra, and former Union Minister Vijay Goel of the BJP. The bidding farewell, Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaiah Naidu said, some of the retiring members have been re-elected. But the house will continue to miss those who will not be coming back. Honourable members, today we bid farewell to some of our colleagues who would be retiring in the months of April, June, and July this year on completion of their term of office. In all, 57 members from 20 states will be retiring in these three months. Honourable members, change is inevitable and is the only constant in life. This dictum is very well manifested in our constitutional scheme of things, which provides for retirement of one third of the members of the House every two years, while it ensures that this great institution continues to exist. Members, as a part of this institution, come, adorn the office, and leave after playing their roles, thus making way for infusion of new ideas, perspectives, and voices. Which can be heard, discussed, and which a consensus can be built up. Well, Rajya Sabha paid homage to 17 CRPF personnel who were killed in a Naxal attack in Chhattisgarh, Sukma district. Honourable members, as you might be aware, 17 security personnel were reportedly killed, and 15 others were injured in an encounter with Maoists. In the Manipura jungles in the Bastar region of Sukma district of Chhattisgarh on the 21st of March 2020, such dastardly incidents deserve to be condemned in the strongest terms and need to be confronted with determination and firmness. The loss of precious lives of our security personnel in this tragic incident is indeed painful and unfortunate. The House joins me in expressing heartfelt condolences. And sympathy to the bereaved families, and praying for a speedy recovery of the injured. I request the members to raise in their prayers and observe silence as a mark of respect to the memory of those who lost their lives in this tragic incident. In the hour of their duty. The members of Parliament on Monday expressed their gratitude to everyone, including medical professionals, who have been working to tackle the coronavirus outbreak. The members also appreciated Sunday's Janta curfew as appealed by Prime Minister Modi, lauding the efforts of medical professionals, sanitation staff, and airline crew, delivery person, and even media personnel. In Rajya Sabha, Chairman M Venkaiah Naidu appealed to public to continue their adherence towards lockdown and taking measures against coronavirus outbreak. Yesterday, to contain the spread of this virus was unprecedented and heartwarming. The people of our country rose in unison to the call of national duty in this hour of crisis. This extraordinary response of the people was a clear demonstration of the collective resolve of the nation to address this formidable challenge. It was also heartening that a sense of gratitude and appreciation for the doctors, nurses, technicians, media. And all others who are in the forefront of the fight against the virus resonated across the country at 5 p.m. yesterday. This house takes note of this positive response and also the need to keep focused on concrete actions and keeping this spirit alive as we brace ourselves for the challenges ahead in the coming weeks. The central and state governments are doing their best to tide over the challenge. Several restrictions on the movement of the people. Are being imposed. This may certainly cause some inconvenience to the people, but ex extraordinary situations warrant extreme measures. It is important that we are agile and proactive, that we are responsible and responsive. Well, that's it in Rajya Sabha news today. Thanks for watching Rajya Sabha TV. Good night.